What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 270 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Today I want to talk to you about another book uh, by Mike Mignola. This is Jenny Finn, Doom Messiah. Uh, as you can probably see this is not as uh, tall as a traditional graphic novel. Uh, I did see another printing of this like the day after I bought this one that is uh, the normal size of a normal uh, traditional graphic novel. Uh, so if you want you can get one that's this size or you can get the normal size one. Uh, one complaint I have about this one uh, is that the words are a little small, and I think that's just because uh, they took the scans uh, for the normal size uh, graphic novel and they shrunk them down a little bit to make this printing. And so at times I kind of had to stick my nose uh, really close to the book uh, to really see what was being said in this book. Uh, sometimes it didn't really matter. Uh, like there are times in this book where uh, these fish will just randomly be saying the word doom, and uh, it's really small print, uh, so you can't really see what's being said unless you get really close to the book. Uh, but it's not something that is actually part of the conversation in the book. So it's not like you're missing important dialogue or anything like that. Uh, this is a book that uh, I don't think that I actually like the book, uh, but it's not like I have any specific complaints about it. It's just a taste thing. Uh, I don't have any objective reasons why I don't like it. Uh, there are other people who would probably love this book. Uh, this is just not something that I liked very much. Uh, it is from uh, the creator of Hellboy, Mike Mignola, and uh, I saw that he he did the cover of this book and that is what lured me in and uh, unfortunately Mike Mignola does not do the interiors of this book. Uh, I have made that mistake before where I would see Mike Mignola's name and a cover on a book and I would think oh cool a Mike Mignola book and then I open it and he's not the one who did the art. Uh, I made that same mistake with a uh, Batman Elseworld called uh, The Doom That Came to Gotham uh, that was printed uh, not too long ago and then I open it up and it wasn't Mike Mignola's artwork on the inside. Uh, same thing that happened here. Uh, he was the writer uh, the artists are uh, two people I'm not familiar with, uh, Troy Nixie and Farrell Derlimple. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say uh, his last name. Uh, and the art is okay. Again, uh, it's not something that is really my cup of tea, uh, but there's nothing specifically wrong with it that I can point to. It's just not something that I like as much as the kind of style that I normally gravitate toward. Uh, the story here, I haven't talked any about it yet, uh, is about this girl named uh, Jenny Finn who is spreading STDs that turn people into weird uh, mutant fish people. Uh, it's got a little bit of the uh, style and atmosphere of H.P. Lovecraft, if you're familiar with uh, what most people think of when they think of H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, this book has a lot of that. Uh, there's this girl, and uh, she's spreading this plague that's turning people into these uh, monstrosities where they have, like, tentacles growing out of their faces and stuff like that. And uh, then we get to kind of see uh, this one character named Joe. I don't think we ever uh, find out his last name. Uh, he just sees Jenny Finn walking down the street one day, and he tries to walk her home because this is a dangerous part of town. Uh, it's really clunky how he gets to that point where he's trying to walk her down uh, the street to her house uh, because he literally just sees her while he's in a restaurant. He's like running through crowds trying to get to her. Uh, it's kind of uh, clunky the way it gets to that point. And then uh, there's another part in this book uh, where the plot has kind of uh, come to a stop and then this other character uh, brings Joe to this painter uh, so that he can get a little bit of money. And lo and behold, uh, it turns out that that is the guy that Joe has been looking for since the beginning of the book. And uh, that's another kind of clunky uh, bit of plotting there that I feel like could have happened in a little bit of a neater way, a little bit more of an organic way. Uh, it's just kind of very... Uh uh, cheesy the way the plot works out that way. Uh, but overall, uh, this has got uh, a little bit of that uh, really rough, gross Victorian feel to it. If you've ever read the first two League of Extraordinary Gentlemen books that have a lot of that, uh, for lack of a better word, just really gross stuff going on, uh, like uh, just you can see the filth in the streets and you can see people and they just look like they're just covered in diseases because it's the 1800s and apparently no one ever took a bath if you weren't wealthy. Uh, you've got a lot of that going on here. Uh, you've also got a little bit of H.P. Lovecraft, like I said, uh, if you're into that sort of thing, you might love this book. Uh, although I would go ahead and recommend uh, find the one that is the size of a normal tray paperback. Uh, don't get this small one that I have right here. Uh, but uh, like I said, this isn't something that I liked very much. Uh, I think I would have liked it a little bit more uh, if it was Mike Mignola drawing it. Uh, but overall, I think the story was just a little weird uh, at times. Uh, you'll, Like I said earlier, you'll have fish just talking for no reason at all. Uh, you've got the prime minister. I don't know if he's the real prime minister 
character, uh, but he is apparently the big villain of the piece, and he wears this weird-looking steampunk mask that kind of looks like uh, the mask of the German guy uh, who killed the professor in the first Hellboy movie uh, who worked for Rasputin. Uh, he kind of looks like that guy, and uh, I don't know uh, why he wears that mask. Uh, there's a little bit of stuff here that I don't understand, and I feel like it's one of those things, uh, people who like this book, uh, they are going to say, you don't have to understand it. It's just weirdness for the sake of weirdness. Uh, this book really didn't do anything for me, uh, but like I said, it's nothing that I can point to specifically to say this is what's wrong with this book. I don't really think there's a whole lot wrong with it. I just think it's something that I didn't really like. Uh, so those are my thoughts on Ginny Finn, Doom Messiah. I hope that you guys uh, liked this review, and if you did, uh, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will be back tomorrow with a different review. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.